Hello everybody, my name is Lori Anderson, contributor for FreedomOutpost.com, as well as co-host for Resurrect the Republic Dirty Uncle Sam Radio. I wanted to bring to your attention today a very disturbing video. The video that I'm getting ready to share with you literally made my mouth drop. And even though I am not surprised because this is going on uh, all across our country, judges that are completely out of control and sheriffs that will obey and follow unconstitutional, unlawful, and illegal This video will speak for itself. Statutes that violate the plain Stop. Of Stop. Common right Common reason Mr. Right Sheriff, on the board. do it. Use it. All right. I'm going to take five. Don't, don't, calm down and I'll be back. Yes, sir. Okay. So not only was this man not verbally abusive, this sheriff right here obeyed an illegal unlawful order. Now, yes, this has come out and I'm getting ready to share that information with you. However, this sheriff, this judge, and any sheriff that was in this courtroom at the time should be charged with assault. Why? They not only did not obey their oath and violated this man's constitutional rights, and I don't mean just his right to not be assaulted. This judge is also trampling on this man's First Amendment right and his right to defend himself. This is not a black issue. This is a black, white, yellow, green, purple, polka dot, and pink. It does not matter. This is happening across our union to individuals of all colors because judges think that they are higher than God. And we have ignorant sheriffs and law enforcement that will obey unlawful, unconstitutional orders just because the judge says so. And that is what is wrong with our system today. And I apologize for being so emphatic today. But I am so tired of sheriffs and police officers and whatever uniform you are in obeying unlawful orders and always using the same excuse that I was ordered to do so. You are not a puppet. You have a brain of your own and you know how to use your mind. Nuremberg trials, there was no excuse by using that excuse of obeying those unlawful, unethical, and horrendous orders. I'm going to show you that in the state of Maryland, which is where this happened, this is assault. Had anybody else done what this judge ordered and what this sheriff did by following those orders, they would have been in jail. Do you think that that is what happened? No, it absolutely is not. Right now, I am on the United States Department of Justice website. The former Maryland Circuit Court judge pled guilty to civil rights violation. The Justice Department announced today that Robert C. Nally, a former judge in Charles County, Maryland, pled guilty to one count of the deprivation of rights under color of law for ordering a deputy sheriff to activate a stun cuff worn by a pro se criminal defendant during a pretrial court proceeding. From 1988 to September of 2014, Nally was a judge 
of the circuit court for Charles County. According to his guilty plea on July 23, 2014, Judge Nally presided the, over the jury selection for the victim, who was representing himself in a criminal proceeding in Charles County Court. Before the proceedings began, a deputy sheriff informed Judge Nally that the victim was wearing a stun cuff. Nally was aware that when activated, the stun cuff would administer an electric shock to the victim, thereby incapacitating him and causing him pain. Several minutes after the proceedings had begun, Judge Nally asked the victim whether he had any questions for the potential jurors. The victim repeatedly ignored Nally and instead read from a prepared statement, objecting to Judge Nally's authority to preside over the proceedings. While standing calmly behind a table in the courtroom, the victim did not make any aggressive movements, did not attempt to flee the courtroom, and did not pose a threat to himself or to any other person at any point during the proceedings. Judge Nally twice ordered the victim to stop reading his statement, but the victim continued to speak. Those judges do seem to hate that First Amendment right, don't they? Judge Nally then ordered the deputy sheriff to activate the stun cuff, which administered an electric shock to the victim for approximately five seconds. The electric shock caused the victim to fall to the ground and scream in pain. Judge Nally recessed the proceedings. Under our Constitution, judges serve as the guardians and arbitrators of justice, said Principal Deputy Assistant Attorney General Vanta Gupa, head of the Justice Department's Civil Rights Division. When government officials, including judges, violate the rights we entrust them to defend and break the laws we expect them to uphold, they undermine the legitimacy of our justice system. Disruptive defendants may be excluded from the courtroom and prosecuted for obstruction of justice and contempt of court, but force may not be used in absence of danger, said the U.S. Attorney Rod J. Ronstein of District of Maryland. Sentencing for Judge Nally is scheduled March 31, 2016. The case was investigated by the FBI Baltimore Division. Cases being prosecuted by the Assistant U.S. Attorneys Christy C. O'Malley and Daniel N. Gardner, Gardner of the District of Maryland and Trial Attorney Mary J. Hahn of the Civil Rights Division Criminal Section. So let me show you what this judge got. The former Maryland judge who ordered a defendant to be physically shocked in his courtroom has been sentenced to participate in anger management classes and pay a $5,000 fine. I am not going to go through this specific article. I am going to leave a link below in the description box to each thing that I am showing you, of course. This article just is U.S. News. This man, right here, has every right to defend himself in the court of law, and he has every right, every right to speak and say what he wants to defend himself, as well as to challenge that judge's jurisdiction, or whatever it was, he was challenging for that judge to be able to sit over his case. This is happening all across America. Everybody's rights are being trampled on by pretend judges. And I call them pretend judges, and I will tell you why. Not because they sit in the judge's seat. No, you have some very good judges that actually abide by the Constitution. But once you have violated your oath, and you have gone outside the constitutional rights of any individual defendant. You have stepped outside of your jurisdiction and you no longer hold that judge's robe in that specific case. Because you have lost 
subject matter jurisdiction, when you have moved in excess of jurisdiction. And they cannot move in excess of jurisdiction. Now, another thing I want to point out, this judge, he gets to participate in anger management and pay a $5,000 fine. Are you kidding me? This judge. Let me show you who this judge is. Here, here is the judge. This man gets a $5,000 fine and anger management. Now, had that been you or I, or even the defendant in this case, we would have been charged with assault. And another thing that is disturbing me greatly is this judge is the only one that was charged. Why wasn't that sheriff charged? Why wasn't the other sheriff that said nothing and that did nothing and that was inside that courtroom? Why wasn't he charged as well? Isn't that considered accessory? Or guilty by association? Or any, if you go under 18 U.S. 241, it's a conspiracy because it's more than two of them were involved in violating his constitutional right to speak. And then he was assaulted, even under Maryland law. So over here, you have the assault and battery laws for Maryland. Under Maryland law, an assault crime can be any offense which is considered assault, battery, or a combination of the two. In other words, the state of Maryland recognizes a few different assault offenses. Now, obviously, uh, it is not considered assault in the first degree because it says intentionally causing serious physical injury to another. They could have. Did they know if maybe the, the gentleman had heart problems? I'll bet not. I'm not saying the man did. But I am saying if that gentleman had had heart problems, they could have been charged with assault in the first degree. If something had happened to him. Attempting to cause serious physical injury to another or committing an assault with a firearm. That which, of course, is a felony punishable by up to 25 years. Now, second degree assault is what this would fall under, in my opinion. I am not an attorney. I don't pretend to be. However, second degree assault, less serious than first degree assault, though still considered a serious offense, is second degree assault. You could still be facing this charge if you are accused of any general assault that does not classify under the rules of first degree assault. In other words, if you touch someone else in an unwanted manner that could be perceived as unwanted, offensive, or potentially harmful, whether or not it causes injury, you could be charged with this offense. Generally, assault in the second degree is a misdemeanor, though it carries a maximum potential sentence of 10 years. However, if the assault was committed on a law enforcement or a probation officer, that assault charge will be entered as a felony. Okay, so even if they didn't want to claim it as a second degree assault, which clearly, clearly it was, you have reckless endangerment. Even reckless endangerment is categorized under the assault offenses in Maryland. The crime is committed when a person recklessly puts someone at risk of death or serious physical injury. Using the term recklessly in the law means the act doesn't have to be intentional. Well, we know what that sheriff did. He intentionally followed unlawful, illegal, and unethical orders from that judge. That judge also intentionally ordered that sheriff to do so. So it wouldn't fall under reckless endangerment. And that is a misdemeanor offense, and it is also punishable by up to five years behind bars. So I want to know why this 
judge, number one, is only getting a $5,000 fine. I want to know why the police officer or the quote-unquote sheriff, who took an oath, by the way, to uphold the Constitution of Maryland and the Constitution of the United States of America, and what was his oath on check that day? This is sickening, people. This is happening across our country, left and right, because these judges and these sheriffs are never truly held accountable. And yes, this judge got in trouble. Yes, he was suspended for a whole year. Yes, he got a $5,000 fine. And yes, he had to take anger management. Wow. And I will bet you, if this gentleman, who was the victim here, had done the same thing to law enforcement, what did we read? Be assault in the first degree. Because it was a law enforcement officer that held a badge. Let me tell you something. There's a lot of great law enforcement officers out there. There really is. They really believe their oath. They abide by their oath. And to them I tip my hat. But individuals who wear a uniform and a badge and do things like this are simply playing Halloween dress up. They are not law enforcement because if they were, they would have never done it in the first place. That judge, as well as that sheriff, knew it was unconstitutional. It was unethical. It was illegal. It was assault. And they thought they were going to get by with it. And basically, realize it or not, they did. They absolutely did. I have not seen one instance, as of yet, to say, what the name of that sheriff was. Why is he not named? Why has he not lost his job? Why has the other officer, who was also in the courtroom, not lost his job? Or even the quote-unquote public attorney for the state because all of them when they worked in collusion together were involved in deprivation of rights in a conspiracy let me show you this is 18 U.S. Code 241 conspiracy against rights if two or more persons conspire to injure, oppress, threaten, or intimidate any person in any state, territory, commonwealth, possession, or district, in the free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege secured to him by the Constitution or the laws of the United States or because of his having so exercised the same, Oh, wait a minute. That's what that gentleman was doing. He was exercising his First Amendment right. He was also exercising his right to defend himself. If two or more persons go in disguise on the highway or on the premises of another with intent to prevent or hinder his free exercise or enjoyment of any right or privilege so secured, they shall be fined under this title or imprisoned not more than 10 years or both. If death results from the acts committed in violation of this section, or if acts include kidnapping or an attempt to kidnap, aggravated sexual abuse, or an attempt to commit aggravated sexual abuse, or an attempt to kill, it shall be fined under this title, or imprisoned for any term of years, or for life, 
or both. One may be sentenced to death. This gentleman was defending himself in the court of law. He was not aggressive. He was not violent. He was not even what I would say was rude. He was standing up and defending himself and the judge didn't like it. So he ordered a sheriff to tase him. And the sheriff, like the sheep that he was, almost unbelievably tased this man. It was not a threat. The sheriff that pulled that trigger, the sheriff that stood by and watched it happen and said nothing in defense of that victim, and the judge should be charged under 18 U.S. Code 241. Not just get a slap on the wrist. We certainly wouldn't. Please help share this message. Get this message out there. This has got to stop. These out of control judges and these out of control district attorneys that do whatever they want and set people up left and right and they don't care what color you are because all they see is green. Because when they can get somebody convicted and in jail and in the prison system, that's where they make the money. They line their pockets with the lives of our families, our friends, our neighbors, our children, our grandchildren, aunts and uncles, fathers and mothers. And all they care about is the color of green. And only until we stand united together in this union will this stop. They must, and I mean all of them must, be held accountable. Thank you. God bless you. Simplified Ellis, and I hope you have a wonderful day.